Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today we are going to assemble the 5.0302 V8 that's going in the Bronco. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is swap out the rear main seal. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil Now I can set my bearings in place. You can see the oil hole on the bottom. They go on the upper side. They obviously, there's no oil hole in this, right? So they're, the smooth bearings halves go on the main, the mains. These go here, there's a tab. It's really hard to get it wrong. And these larger ones, this is the thrust bearing that goes in the center one. All right, now we want some assembly lube. I just got this Molly lube from Stay Lube. You can't uh, overuse this stuff. So you wanna carefully, I think my rear main seal is preventing this from going in. So I'm gonna slide that out a little bit. Okay, so that's now in there. The bearing caps, again, there's a tang that's on the back here so you know which way to go in. Now I'm just gonna put these in place loosely. So I'm gonna, co I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make sure these bolts are properly lubed. Okay. I'm just gonna give them a slight snugness. It's supposed to be 60 to 70. I like to do it in stages, so I'm gonna go to 30. That's 70, we'll go to 68. So now I need to assemble the piston rings. So I've been through more rings on this thing than the Hobbit. It's just out of control. Instead of getting the piston snugged up in here before I put it on the deck, I actually like put it here and try to smash it in, which you're not supposed to do, and it deflected and broke a ring. And then I ordered what I thought were the correct rings, which are these E251Ks, but these have a 564 ring thickness, and that's not right. So now I've got an extra set of E251Ks. These are E458Ks. Top, let's just see. I've already got the, the oil ring didn't get harmed. There was no oil rings harmed in the loading of these pistons. Oh, thank gosh. So if anybody needs a set of seven piston rings, you know, you know where to find me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Make sure those are clocked properly. And they are not. Now they are. So when you put this in the piston ring tool thingy, you gotta kinda squeeze your rings and get it past there. See that, how it just kind of, see now you can load it in the engine block with relative ease. Now we're gonna go to installing the pistons. Dot to the front. Hear that second, there you go. Now I like to rotate it over again so I can guide it up into place. You can read the numbers, one and one. Let's go on. 25 foot-pounds. That is basically the bottom end of this engine. Before I assemble the heads, I need to do the valve seals. Now I've done all of them, but I screwed a bunch of them up, so then I had to order another set. And I'll show you with this one, there's no uh, little silver spring around the edge of it. With the non-damaged ones, you see that spring around there? So I tried to beat it in with a, um, with a socket, and that ended up damaging it. So I just spent the, 18 bucks or whatever on this kit on Amazon. Just look up valve stem seal install kit. 
And this sort of drives it in straight and prevents it from screwing up the spring. Now that's ready to go. All those are ready to go. You just gotta do that 16 times. I like to put a little bit of lube on the seal and the valve end just so it doesn't damage it as it's going through. And I like to uh, kind of rotate the valve as I'm pushing it up so it lessens the damage, just kind of passes through there. All right, so that's through there. It'll generally stay up because the valve seals are new. Pop these on here. The intake ones are different from the exhaust ones. The intake ones have this like inner ring. The exhaust ones don't, not sure why. Okay, and there's two wedges that are the actual locks. It's basically a two piece setup here. And they wedge together right at the little uh, indent. You get them close and then you release the tension and then it locks into place. That's it. I just gotta do that for the rest of them. Okay, I got both sets of heads with the valve train or the um, at least the valve springs installed. That's the hardest part. Now I can lay these down, loosely put on the rockers, and then these heads are ready to go on the motor. So there's this little, I don't know what the purpose of this is. I know that maybe it keeps it from spinning. That must be the purpose actually. I'm gonna loosely get everything on here. and then go on down the line. All right, now the heads are for real, ready to go back on. Now we're gonna put the camshaft in. I'm gonna attach my handy dandy camshaft installation tool here. Just make sure there's no errant dust on it. Nothing fancy here. And then I'm gonna lube it up just like I would with a new cam with assembly loop. And then, uh, yeah, you can see this got really dirty. I don't want to put that all back in my nice, newly refurbished engine here. I used to think there was some big mystery to camshafts, but there's not. It's just a piece of metal. There you go. All right. Nice thing about this is it says back and bottom. It's hard to get it wrong. Boom. For my timing chain, I went with the cloys. Um, you know, I'm not really sure what the difference is in the brands, but I think I, I like to just stick with the basics, you know. So inspect, find your dot, okay. The rounded one is the factory keyway. Yeah, that's top dead center on the number one. This is right. For whatever reason, I'm too dumb to know, like, huh, this just cannot be. And that is nowhere near top dead center. Good job, guy. What the hell did I do wrong? I'm so annoyed, but I'm so glad I checked it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Mark 7 timing set, 42 teeth on the big gear, 21 teeth on the crank explorer timing set, 42, 21. This Cloy's timing set, 42, 20. This is the state of the world we live in where somebody would send you a timing chain set with a camshaft sprocket that didn't have exactly twice the number of gears as a crankshaft sprocket. I mean, I'm floored. I think O'Reilly's can get me a set by like 2.30 this afternoon, so as soon as they open, I'll call them and order it. It's like three in the morning, by the way. So what I'm gonna do is um, 
do the head gaskets and the heads. Okay, about to do the head gaskets. I'm just gonna make sure this surface is totally free of oil. I got some acetone here. And I've already obviously cleaned off the old head gasket material. The Felpro gaskets have a stamp on the side that says front. That's on there. The short ones are the ones with the sealer. I'm gonna molly these up. I'm just getting them in place here. I'm doing one by one. The intake side is 80 foot pound and the exhaust side is 70 foot pound. We're just gonna start with 30 and it's all right. six, seven, eight, nine, Let's take this up to 70. <laughs> 70, I'm gonna take this up to 80. All right, that's one side done. Now I'm putting in my lifters. You're supposed to soak these overnight. I, um, I'm not sure how to soak them and then keep them straight at the same time. So I just pump them full of oil through the oiling holes and uh, that way I can put them back in the original positions with the oil hole facing in. I don't know if you can see, but I'm actually pushing the old oil out through that hole, see? And basically when it runs clear, then I put it in. Now that all the lifters are in, we put in the dog bones. What's nice about these is they stay up, so it's hard to screw them up but these keep the lister, lifters from twisting. So then the spider. So this spider goes down here and keeps those dog bones down. Click, good and tight. All right, now I can put my, my lifters in, my push rods I mean. Probably put a little bit of molly on that, actually. Then I'm gonna go through and do that for all of them. All right, the push rods are in. I wanna make sure I remember to plug these little pipe plugs on the side of the block. I remember an old timer who actually got me started in automotive stuff, Bruce Allen. He, uh, he had bought a 302 for his sweet Mustang off of a catalog company called Performance Automotive Warehouse. Any of you guys remember that place? Anyway, he, uh, he went to fire it up and then he called me because I lived pretty close to a hardware store called Osh. And he said, can you go to Osh and get me a quarter inch MPT pipe plug? We started up the motor and the plug wasn't in and it shot oil everywhere. And this is, this is a plug, this is a hole that he was talking about. I didn't know what a quarter inch MPT was, but the people, the good people at Osh helped me out. He's dead now. Okay, I'm back with the correct timing set. This one is much better because it's got the dot on the correct side. Start with that. Straight up. That looks good. I'm calling in the big guns here. Big guns? You. That's that's perfectly up and down. See that? Yeah. So I'm gonna take this, put this here, and you're gonna hit it with the hammer. I'm gonna hit this. Yeah. 
Like hard? Yeah, but don't miss. Okay, let me see the hammer. Yeah, you got it. Cool. Oh. Thanks, bud. See how tight that is? That's how it's supposed to be. Thanks, Gavin. Okay, I need to torque that down to something, something. I think it's 40, 40 foot pounds. Cam bolt, 40 foot pounds. C2306 is the timing set in case you are interested. That's the Explorer timing set. All right, I put my seal in here from the other side, obviously. I put a very thin layer of Permatex gray on both the engine block and the timing set cover. And I've put the Permatex or the Felpro gasket on here. Some guys don't like to run the gaskets. Uh, some guys run, tell you only run the gaskets. I like to just do a thin bead just to make up for any, you know, apprentice marks that I may have put on during the process. I bought these stainless steel hex bolts from Rogue Hardware from e eBay um, with a healthy dose of pantheses on them. And they're way, way too long. These washers are still loose, so I might just washer these up. It's not quite getting there on these two. That one gets there, so let me get some washers for those. Same treatment on the water pump housing, just thin to win, baby, thin to win. I'm just gonna run my finger around the inside, make sure I pick up any excess. I failed to notice that the kit actually came with slightly shorter bolts, which I'll put on after I get these all kind of started. All right, I was able to get there with a minimal amount of washerage, but uh, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So that's done and I'm not, I've just got them sort of hand tightened. I'm not gonna torque them down till the RTV is at the, a chance to chooch a little bit. All right, I've let the RTV chooch for a little bit. I'm gonna go in and take this up to uh, 12 to 15 pounds of torque, torque, torqueage, torque, torqueation. All right, now I'm gonna install the harmonic balancer. I put a little RTV on the keyway. I'm gonna get that till the keyway set. Oh, that is a positive stop, that's for sure. All right, it's starting to look like an engine. So here I'm installing a melling oil pump, regular. Okay, now it's time for the oil pan gasket. Just put a little RTV in the corners here. And also where the uh, water pump cover, or the timing cover meets the block. Just kind of work that in. You gotta kind of work the lip in. Okay, got that one in. Let's see if we can do the same with this one here. Let that tech up a bit and get the other side going. All right, <clears throat> we just went through first round, kind of just got it to where I was touching, and I'm going to slowly, slowly work my way up on snug, being careful not to over tighten it. All right, torqued to spec, which I think is 15 to 18 foot pounds. Why? Why is the gas get so long? Okay. 
Okay, it's time to set the valves on this. I've got the engine set to top dead center on the number one cylinder, and then I'm just gonna go in the firing order. So I wanna take first take the lash out of this. So tighten that up until there's no more side to side or front to back motion. Okay, and then you wanna go, it should be around a turn to 20, somewhere between 17 and 23 foot pounds. I'm gonna go to 18. So that's a quarter turn, half turn, three quarter turn, a little more than three quarter turn, about halfway between three quarter turn and a full turn. Do the same thing on here. So it's quarter, half, three quarter, That was almost a full turn. So the number one cylinder is done. Now I just need to rotate the crank 90 degrees. So the number three is now at the base circle. Quarter, half, three quarter. So they're pretty consistent, that's good. So now I just need to turn the engine another quarter turn and that should put us on the number seven cylinder. And then you just go on down the line like that. Now, all of my mating surfaces for the intake manifold are pristine, okay? And I've taped off on either side of the china wall. And then on the intake manifold, I've also taped off either side of the china wall. What that allows you to do is have a super clean finish when you pull the tape off, you have a nice clean line if, you're, if you don't like it looking kind of messy. So I'm gonna go get the gaskets. What's nice about these Ford gaskets is they have a, a little notch that lo links into the head gasket. Those are in place. You can use uh, silicone if you wanna be sure that they stay in place, but I'm, I'm happy with this method of them sticking up. So I'm not gonna do that. Now I'm gonna lay a thick bead, about a quarter inch of RTV on both china walls. You guys have seen this a million times. Oh, I forgot a step. You wanna actually take it and push it into this surface before you lay your bead down. I find it just makes a much, it just makes it stick so much better. Not bad, normally I don't have steady hands like that, but it worked out that time, happy with that. So yeah, just let it be for like 10 or 15 minutes. We've given this time to form a skin, now it's time for the perfect plop. Okay, only get one shot at this. Good. Now, I've ordered nicer bolts, but uh, they're not coming for a couple days. So I'm gonna use these for now. And then once the bolts come, I'll do one bolt at a time, swap them out. First thing I'm gonna do is run these down until they just touch. Now, in the order you're supposed to go in, which is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm just going to like a quarter turn. Make sure you got good push out everywhere. If you want, you can take some mineral spirits and a glove and just start smoothing that out, which I'm probably gonna do. It's been about 10, 15 minutes. I've just been um, keeping busy. I went and dug up some old pipe plugs, plugged all the ports, put the, um, plate on here loosely, just to make sure nothing falls in. And now I'm gonna just do a slightly more aggressive snug. Of course, I forgot to turn my mic on in the last torque sequence, but I torqued it down, I got more squeeze out, and then I took off the masking tape. Finished up masking most of the motor, now I'm gonna throw my valve covers on. These are the Merck's valve covers. I'm not planning on painting them. They're like this distressed 
magnesium or something. And they have these fins on the side. See these fins? And I just, I don't know, something's telling me to use them. So I'm gonna use them. What do you guys think, is it lame or is it cool? Well, it was a long road, but my engine is fully assembled and almost ready for paint. I just need to finish masking off the valve covers. I wanted to get like a cheap oil filter to put on there, like as a mask and as my break-in oil filter. And then I gotta do the crank and a couple other things. Sand it, clean it, and uh, sand the oil pan, clean everything with uh, pre-paint prep, and then it's ready to shoot. So the next time you see this, this engine's gonna be painted Ford Tractor Blue, and that'll be next time on Matt's Garage.